Today, Kenneth Copeland shares an amazing revelation from God's Word about what Jesus went through to give you His name and His authority. After that, Kenneth has a special gift for you. So join us in celebrating the resurrection of Jesus on today's Believer's Voice of Victory. Let's go to the Hebrews, the first chapter. There are three different things here that, that we need to look at about the name of God and the name of Jesus. Hebrews chapter one, God who had sundry time and in different manner spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. By inheritance he obtained this name. Now, what happened to it the first time around? He already had it when he came. Did he not? Sure he did. We already read that. He prayed that way in, in, the, in John 17 chapter. Well, what happened in the meantime? Let's go on and read here and we'll find out. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father. Do you see that? and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son, and again when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. Jesus was separated from the Father. Amen. It was not the death of his natural physical body on the cross that paid for our sins. It was the death of his spirit. Spiritual death is to be separated from God. And the scripture said, we'll see it in a minute in the book of Philippians, he made himself obedient to death. Amen. He never sinned. He separated with our sins. Hallelujah. and he went to hell for it. And he paid the price there. He suffered worse than any man ever did or any man ever will because he bore it all. He, he suffered like a man that had sinned every sin that could possibly be sinned. He suffered like a man sick with every disease that could possibly be at one time. He, he bore the curse. He went into the depths of the pit deeper than any man. If there, was, if there was some place deeper that some other man could go, then redemption was not complete. He suffered the whole thing. Ah, but something happened. Whoa, glory to God. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. And again, when he bringeth in The only begotten? No. First begotten into the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. Beginning right here are the words that God the Father spoke, and these are the words that burst through hell 
where Jesus is being tormented like none other before him, all of hell on him at one time in an attempt to annihilate him forever. These are the words that split the bowels of this earth and went right down in there while all the demons of hell are piled in on top of his emaciated, twisted spirit. Because the 52nd chapter of the book of Isaiah said he was marred so that his form no longer looked like a man. That's what happened to Jesus in hell. He no longer even looked like a man. His spirit was so, so marred is the word that, that Isaiah 52, 14 used. It was so marred, so twisted. What? All the sin there is, all the sickness there is, the whole curse, you think that won't tear you up? Oh my God. Anyway, I told you all of that to get you over to this place to have an understanding of what was happening in hell when Jesus was suffering there. And I'm telling you, every demon of hell, pressure in him. And in the midst of that, three days and nights of it, in the midst of that, suddenly, He bringeth in the first begotten into the world. He said, let all the angels of God worship him. Yeah. And of the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flame of fire. But to the son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even your God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above your fellows. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They all wax old as does a garment, and as a vesture you will fold them up, and they will be changed. But you are the same and your years will not fail. Those are the words that got him born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa. Thank God. Now then, I, I want you to look at something here from um, 1 Timothy chapter 3. Now we're dealing here with two different areas at once. We have seen where he was separated from God. You remember he said that, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What most people don't understand, he wasn't just crying something. You know, he said, I only say what I hear my father say. The one whom God sent spoke the words of God. Therefore, he gave him his spirit without measure. That is the 22nd Psalm, which in Hebrew begins with, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And ends with, it is finished. Whoa. So he latched on to that word. You can read that 22nd Psalm and find out everything that happened to him in hell. And he, he stayed with that Psalm all the way through that whole thing. And he used the joy of the Lord as his strength. Now, when these words came forth, now we see what happened here. Number one, he inherited his name. Number two, he took his name by awful combat in hell. First Timothy, well, you, I told you to turn over there and then I didn't do it. First Timothy chapter three. I want you to look at this now. Look at the 16th verse. 
without controversy, great is the ministry, mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh and justified or made righteous in the spirit. Now, when was he manifested in the flesh? In Bethlehem. Amen. That's when he became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word took upon itself flesh. But he was justified or born again in hell. His spirit had to be recreated. If his hadn't been recreated, yours and mine never could have been. He's the number one. He's what? The firstborn from the dead. <laughs> He's got firstborn rights too. Did you know we're joint heirs with him? Now, the third thing, Number one, he inherited his name. So his name had to be exactly the same if he inherited it, right? Yeah. So number two, he achieved the power and authority in his name through conquest. Mm -hmm. Amen. He defeated all of hell. He defeated the devil and everything he has and took it away from him. And he said, all oh, power has been given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. Therefore, you go in my name. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But now, let's go to the book of Philippians. Because you see, that name, he inherited it. He took that authority by conquest, but it was also conferred upon him. In the book of Philippians, let's look at it in the second chapter. Verse 8, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him, now notice the King James translation says, given him a name. He didn't give him a name. He gave him his name. That's not a name. That is the name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Gave him his name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of names in heaven, names in earth, and names under the earth. You know, the, you notice the word things there are italicized? That means the translators put it in there. But without, actually, why would you say things? when it's talking about names. Huh? You, just, you just follow the flow of what's being said here. He gave him his name, which is above every name. Well, what? Every name. Every name in heaven, every name in earth, and every name under the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall bow its knee. Glory to God that every tongue should confess that Jesus, the anointed Messiah, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, one last scripture here. Well, yeah, close to last scripture. <laughs> Glory be to God. Back to the book of Hebrews again. In the second chapter, verse 9, we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, 
that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, verse 14, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, Jesus also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy that word translated destroy means to completely, totally paralyze and render absolutely helpless. To paralyze him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject of bondage. There ain't nothing left of the devil but a threat. That's all he's got. He can threaten you and tell you I'm going to kill you and all that. Well, <laughs> now you're going to lose it. You ain't got no future. You can just stop and say, um, let's talk about your future. <laughs> you come in here threatening me. You come in here talking to me. Satan, you're a liar and a father of it. Now you shut your mouth. And you remind him, Jesus of Nazareth is the judge. All judgment's been put in the hands of the Son. And he's my brother. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. And you better keep your hands off of me, and you keep your hands off of my family, and you keep your hands off of my body, and off of my mind. In name of Jesus, bow your knee. Yes, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you need to be saying it like you mean it, too. Yes, sir. Not crawfishing around the bed. Be like that guy, little old cartoon I saw. He's laying there all sick in the bed, and this fellow said, D uh, did you resist the devil? He said, I ain't in no shape to antagonize nobody. <laughs> Well, that's the way most Christians act like, well, you know, I don't want to say it, you know. Oh, Brother Copeland, I wouldn't say that. Don't you know the devil's liable to hear you? <laughs> There's a friend of mine that, that was some of his kin folks that talking about me, said, I give that that young fellow about five years. He said, I guarantee you the devil's going to take his challenge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he went back and talked to him five years later. He said, he's still going. Well, it won't last another five years. Well, it's been about 40 since then. <laughs> Not getting weaker, getting stronger. This is the message of the church of Jesus Christ. Come on, give the Lord a praise. And you know, you know what that said there in, in Acts chapter four that, that we read that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. But now back up to the, to the uh, 12th verse. Neither is there salvation in any other name, for there's none other name under heaven given among men. Glory to God. It is given among men men. It is our name. It's been given to us. And when we find this out and begin to use it, praise God, we begin to govern the devil and all of his affairs and put a stop to him in Jesus. What are you doing with that authority? 
Are you getting up in the morning and sitting on the throne of your prayer time yes. and, and take about yes. 30 minutes and say, all right, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan, I bind you today. You don't operate in my domain today. You keep your hands off of my family today. You keep your hands off of my money today. You keep your hands out of my church, out of my affairs, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And go through and read all these scriptures. Amen. Do it every day. Hallelujah. You don't come here. Amen. And I, I learned from Miss Billy Brim. She said, I don't do that standing up. She said, I sit down. She said, I sit on the throne with Jesus and tell him what to do. <laughs> Somebody give the Lord a praise shout. This is Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise God. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, changed everything. It didn't just change where you and I will spend eternity. That's, that's glorious enough. It changed the way we live our everyday lives. In victory, Thanks be unto God who always gives us the victory. Now, what victory was that talking about when Paul wrote, the apostle Paul wrote that to the church at Corinth? He's talking about victory over death. Hallelujah. This is the most powerful thing that's ever happened or ever will happen. Amen. Glory to God. I want to send this to you. Resurrection truth. This is a two CD set. Now, I want to sow this as a gift into your life. I, I just want to take my time here where, where you get the impact of this. I want you to call us. I want you to go to our website. I want you to, <clears throat> excuse me, I want you to ask for your copy. I'm going to send it to you absolutely free. No expense, no excuse. Huh? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me read you something here from the the last chapter, the 24th chapter of Luke, and um, verse 49, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. Now, what did he say? Well, I don't know, Brother Coleman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Yes. Everything he ever said when he blessed, the thing that God started it all with when he blessed Adam and his wife. Be blessed. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. <laughs> Subdue it. Have dominion over it. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? He, he blessed them. And you see, it was the blessing of the Lord that raised him from the dead. And it's the blessing of the Lord that, that took him out of their sight. And that same blessing came. That same blessing came on the, the day, that day, that day, that day in Jerusalem when the Holy Ghost came roaring back into this planet, glory to God, and all the angels with him, and the blessing of the Lord fell on them. Hallelujah. And we love you, partners. You are so faithful and dependable. And Father, I pray I pray the prayer of faith. I pray the prayer of healing. I pray the prayer of increase, and the blessing of the Lord on my partners, on their families, on their businesses, on their churches. And those that are in the ministry, a greater measure of anointing in these marvelous, wonderful times of the glory. The glory is here. The glory is falling all over the, uh, it's all over the world. Uh, and, 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 oh, Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. These are the richest times of all, saith the Lord. These are the days when, when my work is not only heard in one city, like on the day of Pentecost, or not seen in one place, like I delivered Israel. The only place it happened was out in that desert. But oh, I'm telling you now, if you'll hearken and listen to me, resurrection will come every day. That to know me in the power of my resurrection is available to you. If you will spend time with me and spend time in my word and spend time praising and worshiping me, saith the Lord, and spend time praying in the spirit, the glory will be manifest. I said, did I not tell you if you believe you'd see the glory of God? The glory is here and it's working and more and more signs and wonders and miracles are taking place and happening, saith the Lord. These are my days. They're your days, and we'll do this thing together. Hearken unto me. Get your house in order. Hearken unto me. Lay aside the, the, the sin and the weight that so easily besets you. Lay it aside. See to it. Lay it aside. Stop talking unbelief. Stop talking fear. Get over into the Word. Spend more time in the Word and less time in the world's entertainment. Spend more time rejoicing and less time crying before me. Yes, the joy of the Lord is on the inside of you. Develop it. Develop it. Begin to confess it by faith and it'll certainly rise up and joy will come and it'll overcome death. Joy will come and it'll overcome the curse. Joy will come and the devil will get up and leave your presence for the joy of the Lord is your strength, saith God. Oh, oh hallelujah. I wish I could come spend the whole day with you, but I can't. God loves you. We love you. And Jesus, is Lord. Be sure to request your free copy of the Resurrection Truth CD set. Discover the truth about the day that changed history forever. Call 800-600-7395 or go to kcm.org slash TV special to request your copy. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. May 26th through 27th, Kenneth Copeland invites you to the Peru Victory Campaign at Eduardo Dibos Coliseum in Lima, Peru. June 15th through 17th, join the Copelands at the Dayton Victory Campaign at the Dayton Convention Center in Dayton, Ohio. June 29th through July 1st, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland welcome you to the Toronto Victory Campaign at Atwell Center in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. For more information, go to kcm.org events.